Farah. Where do I even begin with this fucking rocket bird lady? Oh, I know. Just get a pocket mercy. I'll see you in GM. In all seriousness, I want to talk a little bit about this video. So the goal with this video is to kind of introduce players to Farah. It's not really to give incredibly high level tips or hard to pull off techs. I'm just trying to slightly educate some lower ranked players on the basics of the hero. With that being said, let's get into the tips. So Farah is a great hero for low ranks. She has 200 HP and fires explosive rockets with splash damage with a slow fire rate. Her rockets detonate on impact, dealing 120 damage total to anyone they directly hit, and some splash damage to anyone around it. This makes Farah great for anyone, like me, whose accuracy is about as good as Shaq from the free throw line. Farah's most interesting mechanic, and the one that makes her stand out, is the fact that she can fly, kinda. She can boost, hover, jetpack, whatever the hell you want to call it. Farah gains elevation through a ton of her abilities in her kit. Good Farah spent a ton of time in the air, constantly raining down damage and pressuring enemies from angles that her teammates can't get to. So, Farah's abilities are Jump Jet and Concussive Blast. Jump Jet basically just gives you a ton of height and a very small amount of forward momentum. This ability should be used cautiously, however, because if you Jump Jet with no cover nearby, any decent hit scan will clap your shit. Now, Conk Blast, or Concussive Blast, whatever you want to call it, is a projectile that you fire that does a grand total of zero damage and will boop yourself or any enemies in the blast radius. This ability is great to use for closing gaps against characters who can outrange you, like Soldier, McCree, or Widow, as well as for creating gaps against close range heroes like any tanks, Reaper, or Tracer. Now, you know, for the creative types like me, Farah has a third ability. And now, no, Barrage, I'm not talking about you. At the price of 40 HP, you can left click the floor while jumping to give yourself an insane amount of height without wasting fuel or jump jet which will help extend your airtime a ton. Now we'll talk about Farah's ultimate, Barrage. This ability I believe does the highest DPS in the game overall, which is an insane 1200 DPS. Now you might think, highest DPS in the game, this ability's fucking busted. Mm-hmm, not really. When you press Q as Farah, you let out the world's loudest screech and take all attention in the world while also having your movement locked. Additionally, you have to be relatively close or have a backboard for your Barrage, or else the rockets will spread too far and end up dealing low damage. So, what are some big tips I have for Farah? Well, the first one is to get a Mercy on your team. A lot of people, like a lot of dumb people, will tell me, but Nick, if you're really a good Farah, you don't need a pocket. That's fucking stupid. If you're picking Farah, you're going to want to be in the air, meaning you can realistically only get healing from three people, which is Zen, Ana, and Mercy. And having a Mercy allows you to be much more aggressive than the other two and get true value out of Farah. If you're playing on a team without Mercy and plan on being with your team most of the time, just think about it, you might as well pick Junkrat, who will deal more damage overall while close set up with this team. Another big tip I have to do with range, and this might be the biggest tip in the video. So, in this game, each character has their effective range. For example, Widow is great from afar and bad up close. Reaper is great up close, but bad from afar. What does this mean for Farah? Well, it means that she should essentially play at her threat's weakest range. Going up against the Widow, you'll want to close that gap and pressure her from up close, Especially since, you know, she'll be at like an awkward angle and your rockets will boop her and fuck up her aim. Whereas if you're going up against the Baldy comp of Mei and Reaper, you'll want to poke, poke, poke from afar as much as possible, abusing your range. Essentially, you determine the range you want to play at each game by looking at the enemy's DPS and staying out of their effective range. Now, final tip I have for Farah has to do with fuel management. If you're new to Farah, you're probably running out of fuel frequently and sputtering out into the middle of the enemy team. To stop this, I recommend rocket jumping as much as possible to save fuel and cooldowns. Another way to preserve fuel is to stop on high ground every now and then. Farah's fuel meter fills up in around 3 seconds, meaning that you can stop on high ground real quick and be ready to fly all over the battlefield without worrying about your fuel. Additionally, just playing Farah a lot will help you learn the rhythm of her boosters and maintain height without expending a lot of fuel. Now, a big mistake I see from bad Farah players has to do with her ultimate. Farah's ult in low ranks can often be used to surprise enemies and bursting them before they can even respond. However, if you draw attention while getting a position to Barrage, your enemies are going to know that you have Barrage due to your weird position and save some defense matrix, a sleep dart, baptiste lamp, doesn't matter. They'll save something to stop your Barrage. You should be stealthy with it, except that you're going to die, but try your best to kill two or three people before you do so. Something else that a lot of bad fires do, and I kind of talked about it earlier, is acting like Jump Jet is their saving grace. Now, if you're going up against Hitscan, using Jump Jet is going to get you focused and killed. You've got to have some kind of pillar, tower, or building to jiggle peek and duck behind if you're getting pressured by hitscan. Additionally, bad fires seem to put no attention on their hitscan counterparts, basically allowing perfect accuracy from them, causing you to die much quicker. Now, let's move on to synergies. Obviously, there's one here that we have in mind when it comes to Farah, and that's Zenyatta. Zen's Harmony Orb, 
All right, let me stop. I'm kidding. It's Mercy. It's obvious that Farah gives Mercy a lot of mobility, and Mercy gives Farah a lot more survivability, which in turn allows Farah to go into more aggressive positions and deal a ton more damage. This synergy is a no-brainer. Now, another synergy, this one not so obvious, I promise, is Wrecking Ball. Like we said, an unpressured hitscan will ruin a Farah, and there is no better character, in my opinion, to pressure hitscan than a Wrecking Ball. A self-sufficient master rat of mobility is the best way to occupy hitscan, essentially making a ton of space for Farah. If I'm playing Farah, I'll poke tanks until my ball pressures hitscan, then end up conk blasting in and diving the hitscan with my wrecking ball. And then once the hitscan's gone, I could poke the enemy team for the rest of the fight. Now, counters. This section is going to be pretty obvious, so let's go down the list. You've got Widow, Soldier, Ash, McCree, Ana, Diva, and Zen. These characters, usually in combination with each other, are going to be enough to make Farah's life a living hell. Now, I'm not saying you can't win against these heroes, but they definitely have the upper hand and you have to play around them. Sometimes focusing them is the best way to play around them, sometimes avoiding them completely and focusing tanks is the best way to play around them. It all depends on the current game state. So you might be thinking, god damn, I'm countered by like half the roster. This character's ass, why the fuck would I pick her? And yeah, that's what I'd say too, if I were a little bitch, but I'm not. So, there's obviously a reason to pick Farah, and here are some of those reasons, aka, who do you counter? Torb, Sim, Junkrat, Bastion, Reaper, Brig, Doomfist, May. A lot of these characters have an incredibly hard time dealing with you. Most of these characters, you just stay far away and pound them down with rockets, while the best they could do is fling icicles past your head. Now, sure, some creative Doomfists or precise Torbs will hit you every now and then, but for the most part, you do have the upper hand in these matchups. Bastion, while he is a long range hitscan, you counter him by jiggle peeking, which is when you duck out of cover for just enough time to fire a shot, then go back behind cover. Repeat this a bunch of times, and the shield in front of him, or even Bastion himself, will be destroyed. So, that's about as much Farah info as I could put out there within 5, 6, 7 minutes, however long I you know, talk for. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments below, and I'll definitely be sure to address them. If you want to see some more Farah gameplay, be sure to tune into my stream, it'll be linked in the description down below. I stream for maybe 5 days a week. Uh, I play almost every DPS hero, but Farah is definitely my top 5, and you'll find plenty of gameplay on there. Feel free to request the next hero I do. Right now, my mind is thinking of doing May, but I'm definitely open to change that. Either way, that's the end of the video, and until next time, peace.